here's a situation that comes up often in the forums, and it seems people have different ways of doing this than I do, but I have developed a way that works absolutely fine for me for any size cube and in any situation I encounter. It's a parody where certain pieces are flipped opposite how I want them, and it can happen on the last edge which is shown in all of these, on these big cubes when you're doing the centers first, then all of the edges, and you come down to the very last edge and you have some pieces that are flipped. Or a very similar situation can happen at the stage of OLL, where you need to flip some pieces. Um, generally it's more pieces to flip, but the algorithms and the process is exactly the same. So I can show that in another video. But for now, I want to show you this. So here are some cases how this could look. This is a five by five. So we have all of the edges done, which consist of three pieces, except for this one, where we have the right three pieces, uh, but two are flipped. We have a six by six, where same situation, we have all of the other edges done except this last edge, and in this last edge we have two pieces that are flipped. And I'll get to this in a minute, but on these even cubes you could look at this two ways. You could either look at this as having the end pieces flipped or the center two pieces flipped. On an odd cube you only have one static center, so in this case really the pieces that are flipped that we're going to unflip are these two end pieces. We're not going to unflip the center because it stays the same. So on a seven by seven, here's a case you could get, and this is not the only case because you could have just the outside ones flipped or you could have these four flipped. I wanted to show you this because this is a case that seems to confuse a lot of people where just these two are flipped. Again, you could almost look at it if it were an even cube like these three being flipped, but since this is an odd cube and this is the center, we consider it as being pretty static, so we don't want to flip it, which means we're not flipping these. What we're going to do is we're going to flip these. So this is a pattern that shows that could show up on a five on a sorry, a seven by seven. An eight by eight same situation. We have all the other edges done except this one. You can get a variety of patterns on this. It's always going to be parallel though. Notice how these both are flipped. You wouldn't have just that that needs to be flipped. So in this case, since it's an even cube, you could conceivably is it even? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, that is not. It's a nine by nine. You have to keep the center the way it's oriented, so we're going to flip these two. Sorry, I got confusing there. And this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by eight. Here we have a situation where they're flipped. And since it's an even cube, again, like I was saying, you could keep these two static and flip these or you could keep these static and flip these. These will be easier to turn, so I'll show you that. So we'll start with the smaller one, the smallest one, which is the five by five here. And I'll just put those slightly out of reach and show you my moves. Now, Basically, I'm going to be concentrating on the row over here on the right that I want to move. You'll see this later on with these, and it's going to affect the one that's the mirror of it over here. Plus, I will move that once. I'll show you what I mean. So the moves are 15 moves. Sometimes I call this my 15 move algorithm, but I think of it in chunks of three sets of five. And so the first thing I do is I want to move this row twice. So since we're not worrying about corners and we're not going to do anything that disrupts these edges, 
I could just move this row right there, but that's really hard to do. So there's nothing wrong with moving this last outside layer too, because it just really doesn't matter. So what, and I'll try to put this alg algorithm up there. I call this an R. It's not really an R because that would just move this. It's really an R wide. Later on, it's going to get harder to talk about these with the right notation. But so basically, this is what I do. I do an R2, let's call it, which is really an R wide 2. Then I do a B2. Let's just that back one. And then a U2. And then the mirror of what I moved over there, which is this one, I'm going to move to me once. And I'm going to move this end piece too, because it's just easier to grab, doesn't matter. So that's an L, which is really an L wide. And then another U2. So those are the first five. The next five I think of, as I say, R to me. It's really an R prime wide and a U2, R away, which is really an R wide, U2, and then an F2, which is just an F2. So those are those five. And then the next five I think of like this, R back home, so I say R, which is really an R wide, I'm sorry, yes, an R wide, and then F2, and then I think L back home. So this is the L, which is really an L prime wide, and then a B2, and then to finish it off, R around twice, which is really an R wide, 180 degrees, so an R wide two. And that has solved those three. So it sounds more complicated than it is, but watch how easy it is than on these others. So on the six by six, we're going to, we could just move this row here and that would affect this row. And so we could flip those, but that would be hard without moving these. So the easier way to do it is to go ahead and flip this row, which will affect this one and go ahead and move these end pieces too, because it's not going to affect, but it makes it easier to grab. So it's the same sort of thing. The first five moves, we're dealing with this row, and I'm not going to really say it correctly, but it's basically R2, B2, U2, L, which is L toward me, which is really L wide, U2. Those are the first five. Then we do R, which is the R wide prime, really, R toward me, U2. R away, which is R wide, really, away, U2. And then an F2. And then the last five. I think R back home, which is the R wide, F2. I think L back home, which is really an L wide prime, B2. And then R around twice, which is really the R wide around twice. And that has solved those. So same thing on the, well, we'll do the eight by eight next. I'll skip this one for a minute. So we'll do this one. I'm going to flip these outer two because it's easier to grab. I'll just show you without saying. So we go, mm -hmm. B2, U2. back home, F2, L back home, we're moving both, all of these together, and then these two all around. All I did there, as you saw, and you can slow it down if you want to see, is I moved two rows at once. That took care of those. And now for the two trickier ones. All right, so for the seven by seven, I have it so we want to flip these two. So in this case, we can't move this row because that will flip it and we don't want to. So 
There are two ways to move this row. I mean, one is certainly not fast, and it's very clunky. It's basically by just trying to move that row like that. That's really hard to do. So what most people do is they grab this whole chunk and move it where they want it, and then they move these two pieces, these two slices, back because they really didn't want to move those in the first place. So I'm not going to notate that necessarily, but basically the idea is you're really only wanting to ultimately move this one like you did on the others, which is going to affect this one. And you may have to move these and then move them back just to make it easier to turn. So what we're going to basically do is the same thing. We're going to move this R away to, and I'm going to do that and then move these back, and then B2 and U2. I'm going to move the L toward us. So again, I just really want to move this one. So I'll do that that way, and then a U2. Those are those five. The next one, then we do R toward me, so it's just this one. And I'm going to do this way, just one, that's easier, U2. Then R away, it's just that one move it away, U2, and F2. It's out of focus, come on. All right. And then the last five are R back home, so it's just that one, F2, L back home, so it's just that one, B2, and then R all the way around twice. So it's that one. And that has fixed those. Simple. So it's exactly the same thing as far as turns. It's just which row basically you start with. So again, on this one, I can't move these to flip them. So if I move them, I'm going to have to move them back. But basically, I want to flip this row and this row. So I'm going to just do, I'll try to just turn that to do R2, and then we have, of course, B2, U2, L toward us, so it's just this one, and then U2. Then the next five, R toward me, so it's just that inside one, U2, R away, it's just that one we're moving right there, remember. U2, and F2. Come on. All right, and then the last five are back home, so it's just that one. F2, L back home, so it's just that one. B2, and then R around twice, so it's just that one. And we've solved that. So that's the 15 move algorithm, which comes in really handy. Here's an OLL parody that you get sometimes, uh, especially on even cubes, larger cubes, and uh, the algorithm I use to solve it is the same as the 15 move algorithm that I just explained for last edge parodies. Uh, here's the situation. We have all of the first layers done, white on the bottom. I use the reduction method. And we have this situation. No matter what I do on the top, I would normally, if this is a right angle, I would normally do this move to solve that but I see that it won't. I have a parity here. I need to flip these pieces. You can ignore these edges. So the way I do that is I want to do my 15 move algorithm. And as you noticed from earlier, we want to basically figure out which rows to move that will not only flip them, but will flip those that are parallel to them. So in this case, we want to flip all four of these. So I'm going to concentrate on moving these two, which will, and which will mostly move these two, flip them and this, you'll see in a minute. 
It's the 15 move algorithm. Uh, we don't care if we affect these outside slices because we're not done with corners yet, so that's perfectly fine. So here is what we do, and the notation I've explained earlier, I'm not going to call it exactly correctly, but basically we are moving these. We don't care about this, and we do an R2, which is really an a R triple wide 2, but R2 basically B2, U2, L, and so it's both of these toward me, and then a U2. Then the next five are these are toward me, U2. These are away, U2, and an F2. And then the next five, the way I think of it, these are away, so are back home, F2. These L's back home, which is really an L prime wide triple. B2, and then these right ones around two. And so that has flipped those, and so now we are to our final stages where we can finish our two-look OLL and our two-look PLL.